This is part one of a two-part series ranking my top 30 favorite roller coasters I've ridden. Do know that this is not my finalized 2022 list as I will be visiting eight countries across Europe this summer, but I have still ridden my fair shake of new coasters and changed up a lot of my rankings since my last list in late 2021. At the end of this year, I plan on releasing a top 100 roller coasters I've ridden since I've been on so many new ones. This is simply a filler list for those of you who've been interested and waiting for an update. Now, I've ridden 457 roller coasters at the time of this video's recording. That means that every ride on this list is in my top 15% of coasters I've ridden. If you're based in America and your favorite coaster did not make this list, I probably just have not ridden it yet, but if you know for sure that I have, it likely just missed the cut. To be honest with you, almost every coaster in the upper half of my credits list is a very, very fun ride, but my top 30 truly is the best of the best. With that all out of the way, I'm proud to present to you my updated top 30 roller coasters I've ridden. Because this is part one out of two, I'll be highlighting the first half of my list with the other half to release three days from this one. Starting things off at number 30 is Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. This is, in my opinion, one of the more underrated B&M hyper coasters in North America. Matter of in fact, I actually rank it higher than Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, which missed the list by just one spot. This out-and-back ride features a buffet of parabolic camelbacks that deliver sustained floater airtime to all riders in the train. Now staying in the same park, number 29 is my favorite Canadian coaster I've done, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This newer Bolliger and Mabillard ride was the manufacturer's first giga coaster, a term describing any full circuit coaster between 300 and 399 feet tall. Leviathan is an absolute speed demon from start to end, which is why my favorite seat to ride it was the front row. That blistering pace is unmatched by most coasters out there in the world. The ride also throws in a number of floater airtime moments and decent positive Gs amongst its giant turns. This is a strong standout coaster for this park and it was well worth the journey into Canada alone to ride it. A true fan favorite hits the number 28 spot, this is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Now I think it would be fair to assume that this may rank higher had it not been one of my home parks. I've seen Ghost Rider run great and I've seen it run slow, but the fact that matters is that it's a powerful wood coaster more than it's not. The layout seems like it'll never end and it combines so many fun moments. You've got some sustained floater airtime moments, quick little ejector moments, and some of the world's best lateral Gs. Best of all, it runs like a wood coaster should. Not too smooth, not too rough, just the right amount to be a comfortably intense ride built from a dying material when it comes to most new coasters. Heading south of the border finds us at the number 27 spot, which is Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. Our first Rocky Mountain construction ride to make this list is also one of the lesser ridden ones amongst coaster enthusiasts. My main takeaway from Medusa was that the airtime was weaker than just about every RMC out there, but that the ride was not really built for airtime anyways. The layout instead is one of the more unique ones the manufacturer has to offer. There's always this pattern of low to the ground turns and slow inversions that make the flow of this ride quite cohesive. Not to mention, a night ride on Medusa cranks up the intensity and speed quite a bit further. Up next might come as a surprise to those of you who are new around here, but at number 26 we have Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. Most people will tell you that the best B&M hypercoaster in the country is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando as I previously stated. But to those people, I ask, have you ridden Goliath? It's not all that close, which I prefer, because Goliath has the usual sustained floater airtime, but also some sustained moments of ejector on those last few hills. Additionally, it's the most intense B&M hypercoaster as it takes all of its turns and valleys at a wicked pace, including that toilet bowl helix that is the best single turnaround section B&M has ever built. It really boggles my mind that Goliath is not talked about more, but shorter lines for me, I guess. Number 25 is one of my favorite rides in the state of Pennsylvania, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This aerodynamics turned Morgan hypercoaster has an unconventional layout for the ride genre, but it works much better than the previous inversion-based design. Instead, the ride features quick bursts of ejector airtime that absolutely launch you from your seat. Though it is worth noting that the first half is void of these sensations, making the coaster a bit inconsistent in my opinion, but I can still appreciate its star moments and granted a high spot for one of my favorite coasters. That being said, it is not enough to be my favorite Morgan creation, because just one-upping the ride is Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. So after careful consideration, I think Superman is currently my favorite roller coaster in the country of Mexico. Maybe not at night, but by day, I'm fairly confident in this ranking. This ride has the most underrated collection of forces any coaster I've ridden offers. You got some strong and sustained ejector airtime, decent positive Gs, and some of the most outrageous lateral forces in the world. Some of the track imperfections on Morgan coasters could sometimes be the culprit to a lackluster ride, but because of Superman's pace that it takes them with, it's actually a strength in this case. At number 23, we have Firebird at Six Flags America. You know, some of you probably believed it for a second since this whole video I've been pretty serious, but obviously that's not anywhere close to the top of my list. My real 23rd spot is going to Gold Striker at California's Great America. This is by far my favorite Great Coasters International ride I've done so far. The pacing is off the charts and the intensity for a wooden roller coaster is unreal. It also feels longer than I expected with much more airtime than I expected. For some reason I built up an image in my head that this would be more focused on turns and transitions, but it really had a great mix of airtime as well. What complaint can you really give Gold Striker? I didn't think it was all too rough, its layout was perfect, and the pacing was something else. 
our next three spots are going to be the trio of RMC Raptor clones that follow the compact prototype layout. First up at number 22 is Stunt Pilot at Silverwood in Idaho. This one is the most different of the three for having longer trains, meaning more whip on select elements, and to compensate, some of the elements were made to be a little bit less intense. But take that with a grain of salt. Just because it's a little less intense than the other Raptors doesn't mean it isn't intense at all. It's still very intense, matter of fact. The airtime is still equally as powerful, and the positive Gs pile onto riders during the quick turns. Spot number 21 brings us to Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. In my opinion, this is the RMC Raptor that's been showing the most age since its debut in 2018. Not that it's all too rough, but it does have a noticeable vibration that in some cases adds to the intensity, but in others makes the elements less enjoyable. Regardless of that factor, it's still got some of the best pacing of any coaster on the planet. When I first saw this thing in person, I couldn't believe how well it maintained its speed throughout the layout. Everything from the airtime inversions and turns look and feel like a cartoon. The same can be said about spot number 20, which is Railblazer at California's Great America. Everything that's been said about Wonder Woman can also be said for Railblazer. The only difference is it runs a bit smoother and it's also mirrored, meaning it turns to the left when Wonder Woman might turn to the right. Those airtime moments are outrageously intense the inversions are zippy, and the transitions are very abrupt. Another RMC is up next, but this one rides wildly different from the Raptors. Spot number 19 is Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. Originally when I rode this, I would have had it a bit lower, but over time the sensations and layout I experienced has grown on me a lot. It may be short, but it's hard to imagine that they could have packed in more quality elements. You've got some crazy pacing throughout the ride, lots of great airtime moments, and some really unique inversions as well. Outlaw Run was actually the first wooden roller coaster to go upside down more than once, and alongside Wildfire at Colmarden in Sweden, it's the only wood coaster to invert three separate times. Statistically, it makes it a very impressive ride, but the inversions were the least impressive aspect of this ride experience for me. I loved the way it rode through the woods, and I loved all the airtime it had to offer. Another RMC barely rings higher, and it's at number 18. We have Twisted Colossus here at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is one of the most creative coasters built in the world, as it features a Mobius dueling design that allows all riders to race the other train two separate times. Of course, this is dependent on the speed of the operation, so it is operator and guest dependent, but when it happens, it's awesome. Even without the racing, though, Twisted Colossus has a perfect sequence of elements that we've all grown to love from Rocky Mountain construction. Many sustained airtime moments, quick pops of airtime moments, and two of the manufacturer's best inversions they've ever done. All right, last RMC, and then we can move on to something else. Number 17 is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags, New England. Last summer, I only ever got to ride this thing once, but it was one of the more memorable rides I had on that big trip we went on covering 10 states on the East Coast. Many said it would die out towards the end of the ride, but from my experience, it charged through until those final breaks. It has such a long layout with so many airtime moments sprinkled in, and to be honest, it's everything I wish Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags over Georgia turned out to be. All right, the the last coaster to be in part one of this list is Millennium Force at Cedar Point. I know many would consider this to be a controversial ranking, but when you ride this thing in the front row, I don't get how one could find it to be mediocre at all. The speed is absolutely unreal, and in my opinion, speed is the most underrated aspect of a coaster. It usually isn't enough to break a small, elite ride, but it can drastically elevate a coaster that has few other strong suits. Millennium Force is honestly a prime example, because while you could argue the layout is uninspired and just loaded with copy and paste over main turns, the way it rides through them is outstanding. There's really not a worry in the world you could think of when you're riding Millennium Force, because you of that breezy air of Sandusky hitting your face at 93 miles per hour. With that being said, that was just part one of my top 30 roller coasters I've ridden, spots 30 to 16. Please stay tuned as in three short days, spots 15 to 1 will be released on the channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that you don't miss it or any other similar uploads on the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.